St Stephen's School in East London is working to raise the achievement of their pupils with English as an additional language. Anne Claydon is the EAL coordinator for Newham and has been working with the school staff. An EAL student is a child who um, has English as an additional language. Uh, they speak a different language at home. They may be newly arrived to the country or they may have been born in England but start nursery only speaking their home language. 87% of these pupils don't speak English as their first language. The school is using a range of techniques with an emphasis on speaking and listening. The English is very good and I, I like here because um, the teachers it's make me learn English. I was French then the teacher make me learn so much English then I know now a little bit later I know how to learn English. I speak English as another language and I, I'm, I'm very lucky that I can speak two languages. Well, when I came to the school, I didn't have a good writing, but now if you see my books, it's, um, it's very neat. Um, I don't know if you would like it, but I do it train and very neat. It's good practice for the children to learn within the mainstream curriculum. Um, children are not withdrawn to learn English separately. This means that teachers have to be very aware when they're teaching the curriculum that they're also teaching language. Let's read our literacy learning objectives. Nicola Coupland is helping her year two class to use different expressive voices to take on roles in the story Amazing Grace. We've been looking at the shared text Amazing Grace for over a week now so the children were very familiar with it and they'd also had opportunities to take one of the smaller versions of the shared text home. Okay, we can use expression in our voices and to help us, we can also use expression in our faces as well. Show me a miserable expression with your face. Not cross, but miserable. Super. Do you want to have a go at a voice without expression? Go on then. Choose me, choose me, I want to be Peter Pan. It's very boring. I didn't want to focus too much on the actual reading ability or reading strategy, so I wanted to read the text to the children and model putting expression in my face and using body language that, which, that would help me take on the role. I don't think you should be Peter Pan because I'm a better actor than you. Who can highlight this? The most important strategies are that there are plenty of opportunities for speaking and listening, that the teachers model the language that the children need and also provide opportunities for other children to model the language. I don't think you should be Peter Pan because I'm a better actor than you. Because they have English as additional language, um, we can't take for granted that they know what a lot of these words mean. So in our display work, we take photographs of the children pulling expressions and we label those quite clearly. And that, I found, has helped the children to remember those key words. Who can give me a definition of an actor? What, what's that word? Who can clarify an actor? I can clarify the word actor means red someone pretending to be someone else. Well done. I'd like you then to show me some expressions and to try and pretend to be some of the characters that are in our story, Amazing Grace. And very shortly I'm going to give you the puppets and you're going to be acting out those roles. Who can describe what Grace is like first? We did some work to describe her. You've got, you got grown up. you got Nkuba. Okay. Right. And Saba, how does Grace feel in the story? Up. In parts of the story she feels upset, you're right. What's that in your home language? Naraz. Ah, what home language do you speak? Urdu. Well done, super. It's very important for teachers to, to value the home language and provide opportunities for children to work in their home language. To help the mixed ability group speak in full sentences and to extend their vocabulary, Nicola asked them to use speaking frames. Raj says that I can't be Peter Pan because Peter Pan's a boy and I'm a girl. Don't, don't listen to Raj and Natalie. <coughs> Please don't cry. Okay, I love the way she used expression. Please don't cry. Her voice went up oh, and down. Yeah. Well done. Using leading examples and peer modelling with children at the front enabled the children to get a feel of what I expected from them. 
Oh, oh Grace, please let, please don't audition to be Peter Pan. You always get the best part. Please, Miss, let me be Peter Pan. I promise um, my friend can be Captain Hook. No! It takes between seven and ten years, usually, for a child to become fully fluent in English. Um, after the first two years, a child may sound fluent, um, but when you look more closely at the academic language they're using, um, they're, there's still a lot of support that they need. Right, today... Year six teacher, Tam Van Tran, brings his own experiences of being an EAL child to his work as a classroom teacher. I am a um, EAL child because my parents are both from Vietnam. Um, they were refugees. The only f person I had as a port of call for English was my teacher because I couldn't speak to my mum and my dad because they spoke Vietnamese to me and their English was non-existent, couldn't read, couldn't write, and they still can't. The legend of Pan Chu and A Shun. In a distant land where the trees were full and bloom. Having the teacher was important to me, so I feel as though I've got that same role. I am their first port of call. I need to be their um, mentor, their, their role model. Who can remember how they're going to help each other? How could they help each other? Uh, Pan Chu taught A Shun how to start speaking the right, the right way and pronouncing the proper words of uh, English. Writing is usually a problem in, in most schools because writing is a language in itself. The way you speak is not the way you write. You have to train them how to, how to write. It's all wrong. I need to punctuate. But we've got a special guest coming in. I wonder if you know which special guest it is. He's going to help us punctuate these sentences. Let's just see. I'm just going to go outside and see if he's still there. To help the class become confident using a range of punctuation in their extended writing, Tam uses a novel teaching technique. When I count to three, bow to your master. One, two, three. Sit down. Tam uses the guise of a Kung Fu grandmaster to focus the children's minds on punctuating their work. I'm oriental myself, I thought, well, I think I could introduce this in an interesting way. Um, I had the clothes, I had the look, I had the speak, I had everything. I thought I was going to use that as a motivator. We say word, we punctuate. One, two, three, ah! <laughs> Exclamation! <laughs> ah is what? What? Why does he say ah? Why does she say ah? Ah is a sound. Come to the front and show question mark style. Question mark. Okay, why do you say question? Because why do you not say question mark? <laughs> because some, somebody's asking a question, so that means they'd be confused. Okay, you're very confused. You say confused way. First of all, you've got teacher modeling, which is probably the first thing you do. Then you might have the repetition. Then you have like um, children showing you what to do. I didn't actually say, this is how you do it. I said, um, can somebody help me? And then I'm getting the children to take sort of responsibility for their own learning. And then the EL children can learn off that person. And it's usually someone that would know how to do it. How am I going to save this problem? Question mark. Because it's a group thing. They all stand up. It's not just isolated, just one person. The person I chose was quite confident. The other people would follow and they'd be part of the group. Bow to your master. One, two, three. Even though they're doing it kinesthetically, they are doing it verbally. My intention, I usually say, to become a grandmaster, you have to do it in the mind. And there's a sign over on my punctuation pyramid that says, to become a grandmaster, you must be able to punctuate in your mind. You have to do all of that level five, which is your full stop, question mark, exclamation, comma, ellipses, all of that, and then also apply it to their writing. How am I going to solve this problem? Five already. And tell me all the different types to remember. Ken Davies is asking his year five class to work collaboratively 
using a variety of hats to inspire their descriptive writing. I think it's really important, even with children at year five, to have the opportunity to wear hats, to dress up, to actually role play characters. We use visual props a lot. We use a lot of open questioning, differentiated questioning, and encourage everyone to have a go. Okay, now at the moment we just have Junaid. We're gonna put the hat on him and he's gonna become a new character. I want you to have a look at the character sheet. We've got lots of very interesting adjectives on here. Any ideas for the character that Junaid may have become in this story? An old man. He's grumpy. Can we have grumpy, please, Junaid? He's very grumpy. Can you tell me why he's grumpy? He has no wife and children, so that, that <laughs> means why he's grumpy. He has no wife and children. I want you to put on your hat and I want you to think about what your character's going to be. And I want you to concentrate on words on your list that describe what the character looks like. How about, what's this word here? What's that mean? We don't, we don't really know where, where it came from, but when we saw that it was, it looked to us really rusty, like people, like um, young poor people would wear if they were living on the street. I'd like to speak to that group over there because there's some really good ideas coming out of them. Who is your character, Aisha? William Robbie. And what does he do? He's he's a mo a motorbike person. He he travels around um, everywhere because he his um, mother mother and father d they died in somewhere. That's why. I use the hats not just as a visual prompt to help them with the character, but also the hats come from all different places. And I think that was really important for, the, for children in the community like this to share the ideas, to, sh to see hats from around the world. Act out the kind of things the character's going to say. As some of the groups that I've been to have already started doing that, which is excellent. But try and be the character. It'll help you with the writing. Is there anyone who'd like to try and have a go at doing that for us now? Khadija. Um, she's posh, she's helpful, and she's, um, she looks dashing, and she's, okay. she's clever. I think it's really important, especially for EAL children, to have the visual imagery in front of them, to have the list of words. The majority of the words were familiar to them, but I also put in words that were probably extending their vocabulary. Can somebody tell me, how did the hats help you make these characters? Um, people, it would be hard for people to understand what you're talking about. Um, the hat gives you a lot of inspiration of what your character is like. That's an excellent word, Marion. Inspiration. The favourite part of today's lesson was actually seeing the children interact in their groups with the hats on, making their own little plays, putting on strange voices, uh, especially one of the children who had the, the posh lady's hat as she put it on, and coming out with the posh accent. And oh, you look dashing! <laughs> No, it's really interesting to see and I, I just think the children enjoyed it. I think if it had been a lesson where I said, right, I want you to write about a character, I want you to write down just key words but not have that chance to actually become that character, I think it would have been quite boring and I think the children would, wouldn't have got so much out of it as they did. Looking back 10 or 20 years, there used to be the idea that children with EAL were best supported in withdrawal groups. We've moved on a long way since then and it is now widely accepted that children with EAL make fastest progress in mainstream classroom. The vision that we have of where we would like to be is for all schools to be a place where home languages are used as a tool for learning and teaching and where the entire curriculum is collaborative and interactive so that all children with EAL can make the best progress they can.